In this video I will show you how to install Python on a Windows 8 or 10 machine. There are several different ways how you can achieve this, but the simplest way in my opinion is to use Anaconda. For that you go to the Anaconda web page, then you go to the download button in the upper right corner, you choose Windows and I would recommend you to use the latest Python 3.7 version. Just download it and follow the steps of the setup. In the advanced options I would recommend you to leave everything as it is. After that you can just finish the setup. I unchecked these last two boxes but you can leave them checked if you want to get more information about Anaconda. Now to execute Python you just click on the Windows button and type Anaconda. Then you open the Anaconda prompt. Then you should see a terminal window. If you type the word Python and press enter you are immediately in your Python environment. But for this video we want to focus on how to actually write Python scripts in a graphical user interface. For that you write spider with a Y in the middle and press enter. Then a loading screen should pop up and after that you see the surface of spider. Spider is a graphical environment which allows you to manage complete scripts and also multiple scripts which can be connected via functions or objects. On the left side you see the editor where you can edit your scripts and on the right side you see the console window where you can see your outputs. A temporary script file is already open but I would advise you to open a new script file. Fortunately we used Anaconda for the setup of Python which means that all the packages we usually need for Python programming are already included. For example NumPy which we need for numerical computations. So you can assign a new variable by using your packages you loaded into Python. Here you see a short example on how you can test if your Python environment is working well. If you are finished with your script, you click on the save button and save your file in a folder of your choice. To run the script, you click on the green play button where a new window pops up where you can define certain settings for the execution. In my experience, it is always better to clear all the variables before another execution. Then you click on execute and then you see on the right side your outputs. Because we only printed the variable a here, let's change it to c and then we get our right output of the variable c where you can see that every entry of the array gets added with b. You can play around with other Python functions which I will explain in another video. Another way to write scripts in Python are the Jupyter Notebooks. To get them you type again Anaconda prompt in your Windows search and then you type Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter with a Y. Then you hit enter and your browser should pop up where you can see a list of your folders on your file system. You can navigate around and then pick a folder of your choice where you can set up a new notebook. Just click on new in the upper right corner and then click on Python 3. Now you are again in your Python environment and again you can import all your packages which are included with the Anaconda setup. Here again we use our example from before. When we are done with our script, then we hit run, which is directly above, and we see the output directly under our input. And also we see that a new input box appears where we can write new code and we can manipulate variables which we have used before. We can also go back and change older variables. 
and when we hit run, the output gets updated. But since we used that variable in our next box, we also have to compile this again. Otherwise we still have the output of the old version, which is wrong in this case. What makes these Jupyter notebooks so special, however, is that you can edit and compile each individual block and so you can separate your code into blocks. One input box doesn't necessarily have to be Python code. You can also change your input. If you click on the arrow at the upper right corner where it says code and change it to markdown, you have text input. This is a way to add comment lines or explanation lines to your code. You can also write formulas with it. So in general, you can use these Jupyter Notebooks perfectly if you want to show some code snippets to other people and have explanations in between, or you have to give a presentation or whatever. This is a way to show and explain what you have done. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I could give some help to some of you and see you next time.